Hello and welcome back. Today we will take a look at the Etcher sketchbook with hot pressed paper. You might not know what Etcher is, so I will quickly just show their website. It is a brand known for making a lot of art related products such as paints, sketchbooks, brushes, and even little palettes and art set shields for plain air painting. They are rather pricey, but they are known for being very high quality and their sketchbooks in particular get really raving reviews. So as you can see, they have several different sketchbooks. They have the regular sketchbook called Etcher Sketchbook or Etcher Lab Sketchbook, Etcher Everyday Sketchbook. I've seen several names for these. So they have this white cover and it's actually a canvas cover. So you can paint on the cover of your sketchbook which is quite cool. They also have the perfect sketchbook and the difference between this one and the other ones is the paper weight. A perfect sketchbook has heavier paper, it's 300 GSM and the other ones only have 230 and the hot press one is 220. You cannot see it, but it's written right here. They also have an accordion sketchbook and just paper swatches. The reason why I never bought this in the past is because they didn't have a retailer here. I would have needed to buy it from their shop in the US and they sell all of their sketchbooks in packs of free, which means that the initial cost of getting these sketchbooks is quite high. And I was also nervous in case I would not like the paper, I would be stuck with free sketchbooks to fill up. So you can get either um, a mixed set with all three sizes in the landscape or portrait format, or you can get three sketchbooks in the exact same size. But recently I noticed a website in Germany while I was looking around for local art shops that is actually a retailer or a retail partner for Etcher. And luckily they sell it as individual sketchbooks. So this is the website where I made my purchase. It's called Gustafsson. I didn't really know them before, but they are a really nice shop. They have a variety of products. They do have the perfect sketchbook as well. And here are the lab sketchbooks or the standard sketchbooks from Etcher. So I picked the largest size that they had available in hot pressed paper and that was 30 euros. The shop was really nice and they also included some goodies with my order such as stickers and a sample of a different kind of paper and that kind of stuff. So that was a really positive experience and that's why I wanted to show the shop as well. They also bought their way into my heart by including a mini Tic Tac pack in my order. So here is the sketchbook and you can see the canvas cover. It has a texture to it. It has this rubber band. It feels a bit loose, but it has left a mark. So it must be tighter than it looks. There's also this little bookmark ribbon. And I'm not sure how well you can see it here, but the first two pages are basically stuck together because one is glued to the cover on the inside. Here, you can see that. So basically you need to skip to the third page before you can start working in the sketchbook. And the same is the case on the back side. You also have two pages glued together because one is attached to the cover. And there is a little pouch here or pocket. Since this is a size B5, the measurements are 17.6 centimeters by 25 centimeters. The paper feels very sturdy and I did not notice any kind of quality issues. The stitching looks really nice. There were no marks on the paper or anything and the paper is warm white. Now I'm going to 
hold it closer to the camera so you can see the grain of the paper. Since this is hot pressed paper, there is very little texture. There's a tiny bit of a grain, but really nothing that will bother you if you're working with a high amount of detail. Now I'm testing a couple of pens and paints in the backside of this sketchbook. So pencils work really well. I used a 2B pencil on the left side and a 5B on the right side. And the 2B erases very well. The 5B leaves a bit of a shadow. So as long as you work with a light pencil, you should be able to erase any lines. Next up, I tested my glass dip pen because on some papers, the ink will feather out, but this was not the case here. The lines were really crisp and nice. Something that I also test on any new paper is how a masking pen works and how well you can remove washi tape or painter's tape. But I think my masking pen is a bit old by now because it didn't really apply smoothly. So I think this test is only halfway valid. Here I'm applying some watercolors. I wanted to look at how nicely the gradient would work and how much the very intense violet color would fade. On the right side, I applied some yellow. I was trying to go for a, a smooth wash and I wanted to see how this would dry. Hot press paper is also known for being difficult if you want to dry brush on it because there's not much texture of the paper to work with. So I tried that out and I was actually surprised how nice it looked. Here you can see how the yellow wash dried and there's actually a lot of very noticeable blooms. This surprised me because this is a 100% cotton paper and usually these kind of papers will spread the paint out more evenly. But this turned out to be a perfect example of how my painting process went later on. As it turns out, I ended up with a lot of hard edges or paint that dried unevenly, but you can basically lift anything on this paper and rework it until it's smooth again. You can basically re-wet your paint and either lift it with tissue or just move it to a new position. Down the line, it sometimes felt as if I was working with gouache on this paper. My frock tape came off without any issues and the paper felt completely smooth underneath, so I don't think it ripped the paper at all. Now it's time to test how you can layer or glaze on this paper. And it works fine as long as you have a very thin layer. But as soon as you're working on top of a thicker layer of paint, it starts to disturb the layer underneath. The masking pen also came off almost completely. But I think the remaining bits are because my masking pen is quite old by now. I did one more test for the glaze and it worked just fine as long as I used a thin application of paint. Interestingly enough, there were little spots in this layer. I think those might be fibers from the paper, but you could not see them anymore once the paint had dried. I also tried out some watercolor pencils and you will notice the same thing with the little dots here. You will see in a second that it dried and looked a lot better. I also tried out some water-based markers. These are Stabilos. They are actually water-soluble because they are water-based. I also tried out some alcohol-based markers. These are Pro markers. They're actually quite old because the design has changed since then. But I wanted to see if they would bleed through this paper. 
And here is my terrible attempt at blending two colors. And now for the moment of truth, looking on the back side, they did bleed through. But the water-based markers are barely visible, so those might be okay to use on this paper. So the reason why I wanted the sketchbook and actually why I bought the Hahnemühle 100% cotton sketchbook before is because I'm looking for a sketchbook where I can practice watercolor portraits. So my main criteria were a nice large format, a very smooth paper and ideally 100% cotton. My reference image is from Unsplash. I just thought she looked very interesting. I also have some new paints that I tried out here because I wanted to paint very bright and vibrant portraits. Watercolors always dry a bit fainter than their appearance when they are wet, but I think this is not too noticeable on this paper. What I struggled with is something you might have noticed on the test page already. A lot of times the paint did not dry evenly, even when I thought I had applied it in a very flat wash. So I had to rework a lot of areas. The good news is that you can rework your paint as often as you like. The bad news is that you cannot really layer and I struggled with this once I got to the shadows on her face. Something else you might notice here, but that is unrelated to the paper, is that sometimes the paint looks really shiny. And that is because I bought new watercolors and two of the browns are actually broken. There's some sort of problem with the binder. The shop has confirmed that their entire shipment is affected of those two colors and they remained really sticky and reflective even after they had dried for days or weeks. So I'm sorry to say that this is going to affect this video. You might have problems seeing this portrait because the paint reflected so much. It would get a little bit better later on but this is not the fault of the paper. I've done a couple more portraits since then in this sketchbook and now I can say this is a good paper but it's not my absolute favorite paper because the paint dries so unevenly on the first layer and because it's a bit difficult to layer the paint without disturbing the layers below. On the other hand, and this is actually a good compliment to the sketchbook, because you are able to rework your paint, it gave me more confidence while I was working on this paper. I was less worried about making mistakes, which I could never correct, because I trusted this paper to allow me to fix any mistakes later on. Usually this is something I'm very nervous about, especially with watercolors. And that is why I tend to paint the eyes last. In this case, I was only worried about painting her eyebrows because they're quite dark, but I made a mistake there and I was still able to fix them. The last thing I want to mention, you might be able to see it here, is that on the left page, once the paint had dried, you could see tiny white dots. I'm not sure why and I haven't painted on the left side again since then, but every watercolor paper has sort of one front and one back side and not all papers are meant to be painted on both sides, so I'm wondering if this is the reason for these spots. In conclusion, whether or not you will like this paper will highly depend on how much you layer and if you're trying to achieve very smooth washes then this might not be the best paper for you. But I'm quite happy with this and I believe as a portrait sketchbook it's easier if you can rework your paint many times. 
so this will work for my intended purpose. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.